who writes best songs. Guessing yields Chris Christopherson and Billy Joe Shaver. Fans were stunned by Willie Nelson's newest statement concerning Chris Christopherson. Nelson has always been accessible with supporters. Both celebrities are longtime friends and have collaborated on music for decades. Their connection is nearly synonymous with country music's past. The video shows Nelson's surprising statement concerning Christopherson. Explains why they stayed together and what precipitated this shocking revelation. Before understanding the surprising news, people must grasp Chris Christopherson's life and career background. This past also explains his intriguing relationship with Willie Nelson. Chris Christopherson's youth and career. Chris Christopherson was born in Brownsville, Texas on June 22, 1936. He was smart and athletic from childhood. Father was American. As a child of an Air Force officer and a social worker mother, he valued hard work and discipline. He excelled in football, boxing, and English at Pomona College in California, demonstrating his intelligence and strength. He won Atlantic Monthly Short Story competitions early on, proving he was skilled at storytelling. He became a successful singer-songwriter after his early successes. He earned a first-class degree in English literature at Oxford on a Rhodes Scholarship. At Oxford, Christopherson met William Blake, who encouraged him and grew his brain and creativity, who influenced his songwriting. School shaped him literary depth and social criticism, which would define his music. Christopherson played rugby and got a blue for boxing in addition to studying, demonstrating his versatility. Chris Christopherson excelled in school but had a strong draw to join the military, like his father. Christopherson became American in 1960. He trained to fly helicopters and gained guard medals in the army. He became disciplined in West Germany with the 8th Infantry Division, but his passion of music developed. His gigs in a band with other servicemen caught the attention of music industry professionals. Christopherson joined the military for protection, but his creativity made him a famous country music songwriter. Christopherson faced a tough decision after the military. He was offered a renowned West Point Academy teaching job, which his family sought with a promising future. His love of music was unquestionable. Christopherson was daring to turn down a teaching profession to become a musician. This decision stressed his family, especially his mother, and they haven't spoken in 20 years. Christopherson kept his music and military career going despite personal issues. His double existence earned him the 2003 American Veterans Veteran of the Year Award. The journey to popularity in Nashville wasn't so straightforward for Christopherson. He followed his aspirations in Nashville since he loved country music. Money and personal difficulties hampered them. Taking any employment helped him and his family survive. One was mopping Columbia recording studio floors. He worked as a janitor while trying to get into the music business despite his good academics and military service. He wrote songs and flew commercial helicopters in South Louisiana. Chris Christopherson was upset but continued. Someone threw away his test tape without playing it. Cash spotted Christopherson's talent and gave him a once-in-a-lifetime chance to sing at the 1969 Newport Folk Folk Festival. This focus helped Christopherson succeed as a vocalist and producer and laid the groundwork for his spectacular career. Christopherson's 1970 self-titled album Christopherson was a country music hit. These songs include deep lyrics and storylines like me and Bobby McGee for the good times. And Sunday morning coming down it leaned toward outlaw country, not Nashville. The raw and intelligent sound of Christopherson has impacted many artists, earning him plaudits from critics and cementing his status as one of the most prominent personalities in American music. Christopherson's 1971 film The Silver Tongue, Devil and I was another success. His remarkable record re-established him as Outlaw Country's leader. The album peaked at four on the U.S. country charts and was certified gold by 1973. I found it simpler to write songs like Love and Her than anything else, and the taker kept penning stories that made people feel. Criticism suggested the record was better than Christopherson's debut because he was more confident and wrote honest songs. The honest, gritty sound of Outlaw Country was created by the Silver Tongue Devil and me. Different from Nashville's polished shows, its country folk and rock mix and songs like Jody and the Kid and the Pilgrim were popular. Chapter 33 Inches showcased Christopherson's ability to simplify complex emotions into powerful narrative. The tune was a smash for six months and solidified his 1970s music legacy. Jesus was a Capricorn, released in 1972, demonstrated Christopherson's songwriting and singing growth. This record was successful in business. The song reached gold and topped U.S. country charts. Why Main was Christopherson's biggest hit and revived the album when Jesse Younger failed. Topping the country in Pop Top 20 made Christopherson more popular. Jesus Was a Capricorn, produced by Fred Foster, included more sophisticated instrumentation than Christopherson's prior albums, which divided reviewers. Some think the production diluted Christopherson's reality and charm. 
The album's themes, notably why Maine made Christofferson one of country music's most contemplative artists. The honest look at faith, atonement, and social views resonated. The title track's chorus, cause everybody's gotta have somebody to look down on emphasized judgment and belonging. Though initially condemned, Jesus Was a Capricorn was lauded for its profound language. In songs like Help Me, Christopherson and Larry Gatlin combine personal stories with universal spiritual themes. This illustrates Christopherson's complicated stories. Elvis Presley, who performed Why Maine Live, covered it. The album influenced non-country music, Spooky Lady's Sideshow. 1974's theme and sales differed from Jesus Was a Capricorn. It only reached number 11 on the U.S., country charts, and 78 on the pop charts, unlike his earlier albums. Some listeners perceive the album's darker themes addiction, self-destruction, and excess as representations of Christopherson's personal issues. Engaging with some, yet alienating others. People disliked I May Smoke Too Much and never gained traction on the record. Even the spooky lady's sideshow struggled financially, its creative worth has been admired over time. The album's loss and independence themes resembled outlaw country. However, its contemplation shifted toward darker stories. Critics claimed the album's themes were accurate given Christopherson's addiction and popularity. By discussing darker issues, Christopherson built his reputation as a songwriter who doesn't shy away from unpleasant facts. Shake Hands with the Devil 1979 changed Chris Christopherson's career, displaying his personal struggles and art evolution. It didn't sell as well as his earlier novels, but it was a powerful look into his inner struggles and the themes of hopelessness, redemption, and self-examination. Shake Hands with the Devil barely reached number 44 on the U.S. country charts, continuing Christopherson's fall with adult listeners. Its songs, like The Last Time, were aired on radio but never became hits. Record reception was mixed. Critics appreciated Christopherson's songs for being intensely personal, but others said they weren't as professionally produced or commercially enticing as the more polished country hits of the period. However, Christopherson's honest, raw emotional facts have always made this book exceptional to a core group of followers. Readers liked and disliked Shake Hands with the Devil. Christofferson's songs were lauded for their candor and emotional honesty. Fame and inner worries plagued him, and the title track explored personal responsibility, shame, and recovery. However, some critics believed the song failed because of its dark themes and radio unplayability. The polished, radio-friendly sound was gone, leaving a deeply intimate and thoughtful song that resonated with authenticity seekers. Though initially unpopular, Shake Hands with the Devil has been viewed as a career-turning moment for Christopherson. His darker issues and introspection reflected his experiences with addiction and stardom, making it an introspective moment for him. The songs The Last Time and Shake Hands with the Devil discuss mortality, personal issues, and overindulgence. These themes recurred in his later writing. The record's honesty aided the outlaw country movement and future honest country and folk music. Christofferson grew as a person and worker as he worked. 1986's Repossessed represented a career turning point. It blended his contemplative songwriting with political and social awareness. Five years after The Bone, this was his debut solo album. Politics heavily influenced it. Unlike Shake Hands with the Devil, which was about hardships and mental agony, Christopherson's song Repossess criticizes U.S. Foreign policy and societal injustices, notably the El Salvador Civil War. Repossess spent a few months at number 31 on the U.S. country albums chart, but it never became as popular as Christopherson's earlier efforts. Producer Chip's mix of country rock and alternative country demonstrated his versatility, but its political concerns hindered it from being mainstream. Tracks like What About Maine demonstrated Reagan's policies annoyed people. Some were turned off, but others saw his strong societal criticism through. His 1986 album Repossessed, which combined personal hardships with political understanding, changed his career. The album didn't sell well, but Christopherson's discography includes it since it addresses social and political issues. Critics reacted differently. Some enjoyed that he wrote about contentious themes, while others thought the lyrics on this record weren't as well thought out as his more introspective work. AllMusic's William Ruhlman noted Repossessed had great songs but didn't address its issues. Despite the album's poor sales, Shipping Wrecked remained a concert staple in the 1980s, proving he was still connected to fans. People who admired Christopherson's honest lyrics related to subjects like U.S., foreign policy disappointment, and personal demons. Repossessed had a bigger impact than its chart performance. Even during the height of activity, Christopherson was willing to tackle social concerns and use his prominence to raise awareness. In country music, socially aware artists are rare, but he publicly spoke out about civil rights, poverty, and U.S. foreign policy. He was recognized for his daring genre change advocacy and song themes. Christopherson struggled with drug misuse and fame in the 1980s. This is when his music, notably repossessed, began to depict his hard life offstage. 
to cope with personal and general challenges, he kept his art alive. Christofferson worked with Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, and Willie Nelson and refined his skills. Together, they formed the Highwaymen, which helped shape outlaw country. Highwaymen, their 1985 album, topped the Billboard country charts. Christofferson's career peaked with the project, which proved his ability to blend personal contemplation with social and cultural analysis. Since Christofferson's art is honest and emotive, it has endured. He wrote songs about serious problems and to entertain. Writing on his life and societal issues, he changed country music. He inspired many songwriters to write on life's complexities. Christofferson won a record 48 BMI Country and Pop Awards, which have permanently changed the music industry. He was also inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1985, demonstrating his capacity to produce and leave a mark. He was also inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2004 and awarded the Johnny Mercer Award in 2006. He won a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2014. With these wins, Christopherson became a social hero and songwriter. His music helped the poor, in addition to his fame. He wrote many songs about the destitute, homeless, and miserable to urge charity rather than judgment. Songs like Sunday Morning Coming Down highlighted his social justice passion, which won Song of the Year at the 1970 CMAs. Christopherson's song about a lonely, despairing man resonated with listeners because it reflected his reality. It was also a poignant look at the human condition that touched on topics not generally covered in country music. Chris Christopherson led country music by making social commentary and presenting personal stories. He rose to fame swiftly in the late 1960s and early 1970s when fashion was shifting. His songs address class, injustice, and inner agony. His music let people worldwide express their issues. Thus, he should leave a legacy of kindness, activism, and bold creativity. Christopherson's compassionate and thoughtful INFP and strong individualist attributes Enneagram 4 make his honest and emotional lyrics resonate. Even though the country music industry tried to stop him, he stood up for the weak and against unfairness without asking anything in return. Although his socially conscious songs haven't always been warmly received, they nonetheless appeal to real music fans and those who support the disadvantaged. At the 1970 Country Music Association Awards, Christopherson's contentious statement revealed the complexities of celebrity and how people view it. Christopherson's performance after Sunday morning coming down one song of the year raised questions about his mental health. He denied responsibility and was astonished, while the audience's emotions to other singers, such Merle Haggard collecting Oscars of various categories ranged from confusion to relief. Artists award show stress seemed less acute after this happened. It also indicated that prominent artists like Christofferson received brickbats and bouquets. Acting roles of Christofferson in the early 1970s, Christofferson went from being a famous musician to a recognized actor, proving he could work in several genres. He learned acting from small roles in Cisco Pike and Bloom in Love in 1972 and 1973. He played a musician overcoming his demons in A Star is Born in 1976, his greatest success, leading actress Barbara Streisand. His performance earned him a Golden Globe for Best Actor in Hollywood Stardom because he gave his characters much needed realism and heart. In the 1970s and 1980s, Christopherson worked on his speaking role in Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and Convoy. Due to his work with Martin Scorsese and Michael Cimino, he was noted for his versatility as an actor. He played on TV and in several movies and shows, which improved his acting skills. Chris Christopherson, who played Sheriff James Averill in Michael Cimino's 1980 anti-Western Heaven's Gate, received a Golden Globe for Best Actor. His performance career increased greatly. Christopherson proved that he was one of the few brilliant musicians who could effortlessly transition to film through these roles. He was a multidisciplinary artist who influenced both fields. Terrible marriage to Fran Beer. Christopherson's 1969 marriage to Fran Beer was troubled. Both were hopeful during dating. Marriage was thought to assist Christopherson overcome his phobias. Their marriage quickly deteriorated. Christopherson's book was rejected, and she unintentionally became pregnant. This hampered their marriage start. As the family grew, Christofferson had to deal with more stress as the only income provider. Christofferson faced further stress after the 1962 birth of their daughter Tracy and her brother Chris Jr. Additionally, he joined the Army in 1965 to teach English at West Point. This was a major step toward his Nashville singing career. However, this adjustment weakened their marriage, especially when Chris Jr. got sick and had to spend a lot for medical treatment. Fran Beer worried about their future and their money problems strained their marriage. After their difficulties grew too large, they broke up in 1969 and divorced. Their relationship suffered from money issues, work shifts, and family obligations. Christopherson and Beer tried everything, but their marriage troubles looked insurmountable. 
Christopherson saw the break as a turning moment. It displayed his views on love, family, and complicated relationships. He became the person and artist he is today because of this. Failed marriage to Rita Coolidge. Christopherson's personal life evolved. Another significant event was his 1973 marriage to Rita Coolidge. The two artists met on BBC shows in 1972. Their singing careers evolved with their romances. Their relationship was different since Coolidge was a famous singer. Christopherson's health misdiagnosis worsened his life's disarray caused by Heaven's Gate's failure and other issues. Already ill, Christopherson was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2013. His life changed after this realization. It produced a year-long medical crisis that harmed his physical and mental well-being. His memory loss and cognitive impairment were initially attributed to Alzheimer's. This frightened him about the future and gave the once famous musician a hard task. Christopherson has problems remembering and concentrating. Even the simplest tasks were difficult for him on some days. It threatened to wreck his career and personal life. This medical condition prompted him to take this trip to treat his problems. Christopherson didn't improve despite taking the recommended Alzheimer's medication, instead of rapidly deteriorating. When Christopherson saw Dr. Mark Faladai at Whitaker Wellness Clinic, things changed. Things improved there. Dr. Faladai diagnosed Christopherson with Lyme disease, which is carried by ticks and causes memory loss and other cognitive issues like Alzheimer's. This realization altered his medical career. Christopherson's wife, Lisa Myers, said his memory loss and muscle twitching were misdiagnosed as Alzheimer's. The erroneous ruling was made because doctors and nurses didn't know much about Lyme disease. Lisa said that Christopherson's decades-long illness and fibromyalgia should have prompted Lyme disease testing sooner. She said they believe he was infected for up to 30 years before receiving the diagnosis that would impact his health. Finding out Christopherson had Lyme disease changed his life. His stringent treatment approach includes drugs and hyperbaric oxygen therapy he bought. These measures greatly improved his circumstances. Christopherson said these therapies restored him. The accurate diagnosis made him and his family feel better and gave them new ways to learn about his health and adjust their plans. From being misdiagnosed with Alzheimer's to discovering Lyme illness, Christofferson's life altered. It demonstrated the importance of proper health evaluation and treatment. It also demonstrated the importance of patients speaking up and asking questions during medical procedures. Christofferson died peacefully at home on September 28, 2024. His age was 88. His family was grateful for his time, even though his death was unspecified, protecting his memories and belongings. Willie Nelson cautioned Christopherson. However, the music industry mourned Chris Christopherson's July 6, 2023 death. After Christopherson died, Willie Nelson declared him the greatest songwriter ever. He discussed how Christopherson altered country music and songwriting. He ranks with Hank Williams and Merle Haggard. Nelson constantly praised Christopherson for putting so much soul into his music. One person remarked he has more soul when blowing his nose than when dancing at a wedding. This toast honors Christofferson's impact and business colleagues' esteem. What do you suppose Willie Nelson thinks about Chris now? Tell us in the comments. To see more Music Legends videos, like and follow. I appreciate your view.